Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Claudine from Careers Employability and Skills here at Queen's, and you're all very welcome to this webinar this afternoon, which is part of our Spring Careers Festival 2022. The topic of our session this afternoon is, as you know, passion, um, finding and utilising your passion for a fulfilling career. So huge topic. <laughs> it will be an informal conversational type event. So a reminder to all the students, you can pose questions through the chat throughout the discussion. You don't need to wait for a formal Q&A at the end. So I'm delighted to be joined by two guests this afternoon from PwC. Um, PwC is obviously a leading recruiter globally and here in Northern Ireland. And our guest speakers will be offering valuable insights both into their organisation and exploring this topic with you. So hello and welcome to Louise Black. Louise is a Director of Consulting Technology Financial Services at the firm. And Michael Orr, and Michael is a partner in Consulting Technology Private. So Louise and Michael, thanks for your time this afternoon. And before we kick into the topic, if I can just hand over to each of you to perhaps take a couple of minutes to introduce yourselves, a bit about your role um, and a bit about the organisation before we get started. And if we can start with you, if that's OK, Louise. Yeah, brilliant, Claudine. Thank you very much. And thanks for having us here today. Um, so as you said, I'm Louise Black. I'm a director in PwC. Um, I joined PwC about 12 years ago from Queen's University, where I studied business information technology. And I went into the technology graduate program at the time. Uh, if I'm honest, I didn't know entirely what I wanted to do. So I went to PwC because I recognized the amount of opportunities that it had and the opportunities to follow down different tracks whenever I got there and kind of do a, see what I liked and see what I enjoyed and then use that as the motivation for laying out what career I wanted to follow. So that was a little bit about actually finding my passion um, whenever I joined PwC. So I work in technology focused on financial services as a sector. And what I do is around actually helping my clients to solve business problems by delivering technology solutions to them and delivering new businesses. So throughout my time in PwC, I like to say that I've done everything from actually building a new bank, um, winding um, down a bank that had gone into administration and helping separate out banks. And that's everything from actually helping them set up, set, set up their businesses, as well as set up, set up the technology, as well as set up the teams that are working in those banks. Um, so that's a little bit of an introduction to me in my career. Lovely, thanks. And Michael? Well, hello, everybody. Um, so Michael Orr, I'm a partner in uh, PwC. I sit in the consulting practice and for the last 17 years since I joined the firm, I've been specializing in digital and technology uh, transformation programs, which essentially means I've been helping a lot of companies over the years get out of yesteryear technologies and reinvent themselves in this fantastic digital world. Um, as I mentioned, I was in the firm for 17 years. Uh, I sit in what we call our private cluster. Louise sits in the, the financial services. We have a third cluster, which is government and health industries. So my clients are very much companies in uh, the private sector. So it could be anything from a uh, big, large media company through to a telecommunications company, water utility. Um, and, and every one of those are undergoing, undergoing the same massive challenges of, of transforming with technology moving at them at pace. Um, so I also sit in Northern Ireland. I, um, I lead consulting there, our consulting practice, and I'm also head of the Tech Academy. So myself and Louise sit on the committee that looks after all the tech graduates that join the firm across the firm. Um, and I guess my specialty is in sort of digital and technology transformation and I sit on the leadership team there. So I've got a lot of leadership roles, which is marvelous, but actually the, the thing I love the most and I'm passionate about to trip in our topic of today is helping our clients to transform. Lovely, good way to end. We'll, we'll, we'll keep referring to that as we go along. Thank you both for that intro. Um, guys, before we kick off into the topic, I suppose I just wanted to start by throwing a question out to our student audience and um, just for something for you to think about for a moment. And that's how many times have you been told to follow your passion? Um, because it's a message that appears in everything from TED Talks to graduation speaks to job ads, or graduation speeches to job ads. Um, and we even sometimes say it to ourselves. Um, I came across a, a recent study the other day from a class of Columbia Business School MBA students where over 90% of them had listed pursuing their passion as their most important goal for their future jobs. Um, and guys, perhaps a common misconception people then have about passion is that it's fixed. You know, you either have it for something or you don't. 
um, and then you know that belief can be, can be limiting. So I'm just going to hand over to you, Michael, first then to perhaps explore this point and, and your thoughts around the topic a bit. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and pursuing your passion, I think, is the right thing to advise everybody. It's defining what your passion is and what it's for is important. I guess one of the things I'm really passionate about is doing the things that I love and what I what I do is my day job. And I'm also passionate about trying to avoid the things that I don't. Um, I don't I'm not passionate about. Passion for me uh, is, I guess it's, it, and it's in all of us, okay? I think the important piece is that you don't, passion can appear in different forms. And I'm sure Louise will cover what's important to her from a passion perspective. But when I, what, what I think I'd like to do is just sort of toss it out to what I am looking for when I for, for, for people when they come and chat to me about this. I do look for passion when I interview and, and, and everybody I see because I think it's, it's one of those sort of grounding capabilities that you have. Uh, and it, when, when I sit with graduates and they tell me all about what it is they, they want to do and what their futures are going to be and what they're going to look like, you can hear it in them, right? You can hear how they say it, how they present it and how it means to them. That's when you just start to detect that passion. Um, and what we very much work with all of our graduates when they join the firm is finding the right place to deploy that passion, to harness that passion, to develop that passion, to make it a very powerful uh, asset that you have, um, and to steer it away from the things that dull your passion. Because let's be honest, we want to go to work every day feeling that buzz. We want to go to work with that day, knowing we can make a difference, doing something different. And we want to leave work at the end of the day feeling, I've done something really, I really enjoyed today. Now, I'm not trying to paint a picture here that says not all days are, are, are beautiful days, but most of them should be. They should be really good days where you're playing to your passion uh, and moving forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, Louise, any sort of headline thoughts on that? Um, well, actually, so I think a really good quote from Steve Jobs is around actually the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And I think everything that Michael says there around actually something that you're passionate about, you're more inclined to actually put the effort in and be energized to do it and make sure that you do a good job at it. And that's why as employers, that's something that we look at um, whenever we interview someone. It's around actually, is it something that you're willing to go the extra mile on, put a little bit of creativity and thought into because it's something that you're really interested in. And I'll pick up on the point that Michael says around actually, it's just as important about finding what you're not passionate about. And um, if I reflect on my career at PwC, every time I had an opportunity to do something, I took it and says, okay, let me try that and see what it's like. Because I think it's really important to go, I've tried that, I don't like it, I know to steer clear of that again. You know, and I think that's just as important to be able to actually hone in on what you're passionate about and then make sure that that's what you focus your career path on. So if I reflect on some of the things that I've done in my time at PwC, sitting in um, a room with a cost model trying to work out how um, a client can save money um, is something that I did not enjoy doing. And I remember sitting on a project for nine months with a team of people doing it, trying to do that. Whereas give me a problem of um, a client wants to build a new business area or sell a new product to the market. I absolutely love actually the creativity side of that, the teaming that you get to do, kind of the, the, the joy that I get from actually working from people to be able to create something. So for me, that was one of the areas where I found my passion, <laughs> you see, and I go, do you know what? That's the kind of work that I want to do. And that's the kind of work that then I can excel in and I make sure that I deliver really high quality work in. And that's why actually this topic is really important. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, a lot of our students are, are perhaps setting, you know, perhaps not had their first, well, obviously their graduate roles, they might have had other roles. Um, and they're looking for, well, what, actually, what is this passionate thing? What is this one thing? But actually what you're saying is, you know, uh, you actually maybe sometimes need to get into an organization and a role to develop a passion for a yeah. role or perhaps things that you're not passionate about, along with the skills and the confidence and relationships that allows you to really experience and, and, and develop that. And I guess one of the, the things about large organizations, PwC, is there is that room then within the firm to, to maneuver around it and, and, and find it. And I think that's right, Claudine. I wouldn't sit there and beat myself up going, oh, I don't know what my passion is yet. So mm -hmm. I spoke to a colleague about this about this topic that we were coming to, to chat about this morning. She was sitting there going, 
I've been in my career 10 years and I'm still trying to find out what I'm passionate about and where my real area is. So as a student, I wouldn't be sitting there going, oh my goodness, I don't know yet what I'm passionate about. But yes. what I would say and what I would encourage is throw yourself into everything and give yourself that opportunity to be able to work out what that is for you. Yeah. And don't be sort of quite fixed on that. Any, yeah. any thoughts on that, Michael? Yeah. <clears throat> I think Louise is stealing my lines, but <laughs> and a perfect answer, actually, because in my view, the one of the beauties about what we have in the firm is such diversity of opportunity and the things you do. It is immense. And one of the first speeches I do with the graduates when they join us is to say, and, and Louise has been through this, so she knows, is just try everything and be passionate about one thing, and that is doing a brilliant job as best you can. Yeah. But you may not like what it is you've done, and you move on to something else. As I said, and I have exactly the same example as, as Louise, I remember sitting, having to do an analyze a, a very complex set of spreadsheets for an outcome that I had to do it and I got headaches every night. I never get a headache because my brain was just trying to crunch this stuff that you probably could do very easy on computerized spreadsheets right now. But I remember coming out of it, learned an awful lot, uh, a fantastic amount that I know writing SQL scripts across um, multiple Excel spreadsheets now as it was one of the skills that I learned. But I don't want to do it ever again because <laughs> it just wasn't playing to my strength. But it was a necessary thing, and it became a very, very vital tool for me as I moved forward in my career of how to do. But what I also learned was was people who love that. Yeah. Yeah. And now when I build teams <coughs> and I ask for people, I can go and find the right people who want to be able to do those sorts of things. Because guess what? They are passionate about it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I ain't. But that's part of the, the beauty of it, as I said. And, I, I, and again, I, for every, every graduate sitting there thinking, you won't really know, and, and I think this is a brilliant thing in life, really, is it, until you experience things, you don't know. Yeah. You give everything exactly the same thing. When I was at Jury, I was thinking, I, I'm not absolutely sure what it is I want to be yet, but I know I've got all this fantastic yeah. stuff. But please give me the opportunity to find me. Yeah, absolutely. And, that's, and I'm not a blatant sell to our places. <laughs> We're brilliant for helping people find whatever your background, whatever your degree, whatever it is you consider doing. And I'll give you an example, just as one of my guys, he's very, he's really rushing through the firm very quick. And I, I think he started, his primary degree was, um, was it Chinese studies and philosophy, Louise, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Because I, when I, as a game, when I do the opening with the guys, I often tell them what type of degree they have. And because I'm a technologist, I'll always tell them how that's all been digitized, as you can imagine. And he stumped me because that one I went, how do you digitize Chinese and philosophy as a, as a, as a learning subject? Um, but that guy went on to be one of my senior digital strategists. And what he does is help interpret what a client really needs going forward and turn it into technology solutions. And his background uh, from a guy over there on the uh, actually pretty hugely creative in the end, uh, but he has a deep love of technology, which he got post university. But all that happened when he joined us and found a passion for digital technology. Thank you. I think you made a really good point there about teams because it's not just about yourself. Um, but actually, even the students now, you know, working in teams, doing assignments, you know, it is about sort of being that awareness, I suppose, not only your own strengths, weaknesses and passions, but those around you. And that, you know, that follows through throughout your whole career, doesn't it, in terms of the, the team okay. dynamics and the teams you're working in. Um, I've just got a question come through and, and they've sort of veered slightly off the, the passion topic, which is which is totally fine. Um, and that's what are some of the main transferable skills? Um, we've touched on passion, obviously, as one that you look for graduates um, and why. So I don't know who wants to, to, to kick that off there, Michael. I was going to say Louise. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, all right. So one of the very first things that we do when we get our grads in is we we start to look for, everybody's got a set of common competencies and capabilities. So we want to find that out pretty good, uh, pretty early in the process. And, and personality types, obviously very important as well, because we have people that are from the extremes of personality type all working together. And you, you teed that up perfectly, Claudine, that's why that's really important. Because team dynamic, 
Everything that we do as a firm is based on collaboration and working together. Yeah. Individuals are very smart people, but individuals working together in teams are incredibly smart people. And I mean, incredible outcomes come out of that. And that goes across your, you know, different types of personality type, different types of content, different types of background, different types of diversity, male, female, cultural diversity. Throw that all into the mixer. And if you get the blend right, you certainly can make a fantastic outcome. So yeah. um, for me, the, the common capability, again, everybody will vary on certain strengths. So we tend to very quickly in our first year or two when people are, are with us is to work out all those common capabilities that they have strength in. And some of them will be very basic, like you know, that, you know, they have a, a learn fast. They listen well. Yeah. You know, they're very agile. Some people are just brilliant at taking on concepts very quick and other people aren't. That doesn't make them slow learners. That yeah. just makes them different. But what I like to be able to do by the end of that year, have a good idea of where a lot of people have some very core foundations. And you're aware of them too, right? What are your strengths? You'll hear people talk about your strengths and weaknesses throughout your bloody lives. And by the way, that won't change. That at my level, I'm still people pointing out what I'm not so good at. So it's important to always remember what those strengths are and anybody that can help you with them. And you'll be aware of them and you'll, you'll be aware of what you don't like either and what you're not so strong at. So you'll, you'll get characters like me, which are quite gregarious and quite, out, you know, quite outspoken, quite ha uh, very strong in opinion. And then a lot of people in my team wouldn't say booty or goose, but boy, are they amazing thinkers. And I'll go and have to chat completely differently to them to get the best of them. But I know their personality type and how they wish to be communicated yeah. with, which is completely yeah. different as to how I'll communicate with Louise, who's quite similar to myself. And, quite confident and capable of standing up and have a full-on conversation on any subject whatsoever, because we can. So I think that's really, really positive point for our student audience in that, you know, if you work in the right organisation and they understand you and your strengths and where you fit in the team, you can flourish. You don't need to worry too much about really trying to cover those gaps of your not strengths, so to speak. Um, so that that's really encouraging. Louise, anything to add? Um and I think it's that point around actually diversity. So yeah. what we're not looking for is a uniform, this is the person and this is what they need to act like and this is what they need to you know, be good at. It's actually the diversity of the individuals that we put together in teams that is actually the strength of what we do. And look, one of the things, we are focusing on softer skills and those transferable skills today because as employers, when you join, say, the graduate program, we teach you all the technical skills that you need but it's those softer skills that you don't necessarily get taught and things that you should be really, you know, focusing on and aware of as you're going through your university career um, and as you're working on different projects, say, throughout your degree or you're working in different teams. So it's those things, like Michael said, around teamwork, around actually leadership and um, creativity, around flexibility. It's all those kind of things that as employers, we're going, OK, yep, we can see what you're bringing to it. We can see, you know, what you've thought about um, and there are a lot of the strengths that we'll look for whenever we're interviewing or whenever we're going through assessments. Thank you very much, Liz. I, I agree completely. I've just got a question coming here from Mohammed, who um, very wonderfully says, I feel this is an area where we can literally talk for hours. Yeah. Um, you know, is there a right, we've kind of touched on this, but we'll just sort yeah. of close off anyway. Is there a right way to find our passion? Um, well, my view is you probably already know what it is. You just are unsure whether to play with it just yet. The environment with which you have been in the last number of years has been a learning environment. You know, you started with primary, then secondary, then tertiary level of education. And it's all been given to you. And it's, you know, things will start to appear what you like and, and are, are fond of, your learning type and how you wish to learn and things you want to do. So you know, as I said, I think you'll have an idea in your head of, of what you like, but all, all we're saying to you is don't worry about how that's going to manifest itself. Yeah. The yeah. next 10 years, yeah. and I mean 10 years, is where that starts to come. And that yeah. is by having as many learning experiences yeah. as you possibly can, cycles of experience in different things, starts to build a bank of, do you know something? I really love this stuff. And then that's when you know where to apply your passion. Yeah. And I think it 100% it is that piece around explore, because actually you might realize that you're going to stumble across your passion. 
you know, it's not a scientific, okay, I need to go through this tick box list to go, which one of these am I good at? You'll actually stumble across it, maybe in the most unlikely places of things that you're actually doing or looking for. And you're most, you're more likely to stumble across things when you have an open mind Absolutely. and you're undertaking as many opportunities as possible yeah. and not being fixed, I suppose, in, in your mindset. Um, will not knowing my passion be a drawback when making an application or attending an interview? Yeah. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what I would say is it doesn't matter if you don't know your passion yet. That's something that you can discover um, as you start your career. But being energetic and enthusiastic and yeah. applying yourself and being open to all of those opportunities, that's what we're looking for. You don't have to come in and say to me, I'm passionate about this and this is what I want to do. You just need to show that you're open minded and that you're willing to give anything a try. Look, I, I, one of the key things that I'm always looking for are people that we can work with mm. to find themselves. And, you know, one thing we are brilliant at is shaping people into the things that they love to do and we love them to do because guess what that's a fantastic outcome for my clients so that's why it's one of the key things i'm always looking for is people with massive potential and they may not know what that is but we do yeah. they're driven i.e they whatever i ask them to do and we ask them to do as a firm they get stuck in and they do everything in their power to do as best an outcome as they can Enthusiastic, as, as Louise talked about. But I think one of the biggest ones is, and they will listen. Because yeah. and listening to old farts like me, who've been around a long time, who actually have an incredible wealth of information and content that I am dying to get out of my head and decant into them. And that all I want them to do is listen to that and take as much of that as possible before their brains blow up. <laughs> but I'm looking for people that we can coach. Yeah. And if you can be coached, you will go very far throughout your lives. Yeah. Um, next question is, um, any advice to students considering applying to PwC? And sort of the part B of that is, how much time do consultants um, spend in GB? Louise, so. do you want to handle the first bit and I'll handle the second bit? Um, so the first bit was around actually advice for advice. people applying. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you want to just the logistical advice, guys. You know, there'll be um, obviously the rules are now up live in my future. They're going onto the Graduate Land platform tomorrow. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a wee bit about the virtual park, perhaps. Um, which is virtual parks, obviously, um, you know, there's a huge wealth of opportunities in there um, for students to go in and hear more about the, the rules and the different types of rules and have Q&A around that. But um, anything from someone senior like yourself in terms of added hints and tips would be useful. Um, yeah, well, I would say take all those opportunities to attend those virtual events. So for, as you say, Claudine, the virtual park is an opportunity to go in and ask all of the questions, ask what kind of, you know, people were looking for, ask any of the details around the specific roles and what it might be like to work um, in that role, because we make sure that on those virtual parks, so we'll have representatives who have actually just been through the process, who are maybe, you know, a year in the firm and can give you a good flavor of actually what it was like for them and kind of how they went through the process and what it was like in the first year. So I would certainly make sure that you attend all of those events. Um, also have a look at the website and um, read up on actually the key capabilities that we um, deliver in PwC and the kind of clients that we work with. And just try and kind of read up on that in advance so that you can come in more knowledgeable. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Michael, were you gonna come in on the? Yep, so interesting question. One, I can't give a definitive answer because I have no idea what the world's gonna look like post pandemic is the simple answer. To give you an idea, both Louise and I would have been travelers. I sort of, I would have been on the plane on a Tuesday morning and return usually Thursday night. Um, and now I haven't flown for three times in two years. Uh, and I'm not seeing, and I've been delighted as have my clients that I have delivered some global transformation programs, technology implementations for my clients and I didn't. And one of my clients I've working with for the last two years, I've never met them face to face. They look like what you do. That's what I saw on the screen. Uh, I've no idea they're six foot six or two foot two. Um, you know, I have no idea on the. But, but what's important to me going forward, I guess, is that the, the 
I guess the, the virtual world that we are all living in is, 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 <laughs> is no idea. I think, and this is what my, th my thoughts are, that I'll probably be traveling a bit. And what's important is that, and you've heard us talk about it earlier in the collaboration, we work very closely with, with our teams and our client teams. And that means pulling people into proximity. But whereas I would have traveled three days a week, I think I'll be more likely doing once a month doing design workshops or, or deployment workshops or whatever. So I do see the point of going away, but I don't think I'll be going as well as much because guess what? The technology actually has worked pretty well over the last couple yeah. of years. And we managed to be able to do that. And, you know, having this new fancy office in Belfast, which we've just opened in the summer, and it is such a fantastic work area. Um, so again, uh, the digital technology we put in place to allow us to do this and exist and coexist with our clients digitally. But I see a point of working very closely with them, but I just don't see the point of being on a plane all the time. One thing I would say about my experiences, which is important on the travel issue, or not so much as an issue for me, because I love those experiences. I have sat in some big offices. I sat in New York with one of the most senior people on earth who earned millions and millions of pounds per year and convinced him that he needed to completely re-engineer how his test technology worked in his business. And I walked out the door of that, got on a plane and flew home. And then I spent two years doing exactly that, uh, flying around the world, sorting those problems out. And I'm a guy from Belfast who grew up in a, a rough working class area, dodging bullets and bombs. Uh, and there I was sitting in Park Lane in the highest office overlooking part of the Central Park. And that's the, the thing about being able to be somewhere and traveling a bit as part of your role gives you experiences like none ever. Absolutely. So, you know, technology has changed things, but, you know, hopefully they can come on out now. You know, the graduates for next year have the best of both worlds, um, you know, and that's a, a movable thing then. Um, I've just got a, a question, actually, and it's really, you know, if you could put yourself in the shoes of our audience, you know, who aren't all necessarily final years, some will be going to do their placements, and I know your placements are, are all live at the moment. But, um, you know, if you were to look back at where, you know, at, when you were at that point, you know, is there any hints or tips that you would give, you know, to your future self? <laughs> uh, first off, I'd say I'd love to be in your shoes. Love to be in your shoes. Love the because when I come out, we didn't have anything like this, and the experiences that I have gained and the access to it. So the hints and tips are just. I think a lot of it's already been said on on what we've talked about today. Be open minded. You know, doesn't matter what year you are. Be curious. Want to learn. Want to be shaped. Yep. Want to be developed. Be passionate about any of those factors. You don't need to just have that passion. As I said, if it's innate, it will appear when you've hit the right trigger, if you know what I mean, and it's there. And if it doesn't, then don't worry about it. So, yeah. you know, the only advice I would have is, is look, get in, learn, and and, and you know, get the opportunity, and don't worry too much. Back to that kind of open-minded, I think, and not having that So fix. open. Curiosity is a big thing for us, being yeah. curious to query why, why, why. I'm one of those kids who was a why, why, why. And I didn't stop saying why until I understood um, question here from Anaf. Um, I have a question regarding values. When I look at an organization, I look at their people to understand their values. Can you tell me how PwC's values has impacted your life? And can you give me a specific example? Sure. So. Um, I'll tackle this one and Luigi when I throw in with a yeah. couple of words. So Great. Thank you. I, I love our values and I'm a partner, so it's a wee bit easier for me to say that. But actually, if I don't love the values and I don't act the values, then they're worthless to anybody who works in the firm. The firm are very strong on being value driven. You know, act with integrity is one of our key ones. And if you can't act with integrity throughout your life, by the way, yeah. it'll always find you out no matter what it is. Some of these that you'll hear in spades coming from Louise at night, make it make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. We want, and that curiosity of finding it, make a difference in a positive way. Please don't make a difference in a negative way. If you live in making a difference in a positive way, it, with everything that you do, you'll always come out smelling of roses. You'll get massive respect. Um, care, funny enough. And if I think about the investment we have put in the people in the last 10 years, in our local office here, for example, we're now the leading office in the UK, put a lot of money into the office. The environment is unbelievable. We have a wellness center. 
um, which is all about looking after our mental health and our physical health. We have so many toys and tools and we work really hard to make sure that people get fantastic experiences. They love to work for us. They love what that does and we love them to work for us and we look after them as best we can. So care is a big one for us as well. Work together. You've heard me and Louise harp on about that. I'm not going to. That is the best. It's not about. I'm a very smart guy and Louise is a very smart woman. But all of us put together are incredibly smart in teams. We're much smarter in teams than the individuals. And then the final one will be reimagine the impossible or the possible. And that comes back to my point on curious. Why is that? Don't accept things for what they are. You know, when you start your careers, you're going in there on a ladder where you're right down at the bottom again. Uh, and you're right down at the bottom, but you actually have something very valuable. And that is an open mind. Assume nothing when people ask you, this is the way it is, and go, well, why is that? And that curiosity just opens so much many doors for us who've been around a long time and maybe have missed the wood for the trees. And that's why reimagining the possible and thinking through why things are. And that's why the world is changing so massively right now, because we don't accept the way it was yesterday is the right way. Louise? And look, the only thing I would add to that, Michael, is actually that piece around care, because I definitely would say that over the past two years, I've actually been proud to say that I work for PwC and the amount of care that we've put around the people, um, the, the Belfast um, that the UK firm has offered to our people in terms of the support, in terms of making sure, you know, that one, you can actually pivot and move online and, um, as you say, Michael, deliver large transformational programs remotely but actually the fact that we've always had um, our people in mind and making sure that actually everyone is supported when they need to be, everyone can take time off if they need to. Um, we check in on people's mental health and it's that piece for me that I'm really proud to say that I'm part of PwC and the care that we've shown for our people and making sure that actually they've been able to um, do the right things over the past couple of years. Yeah, the, the value space is, is, is really, really interesting and, and it's good to hear that. And you also, you know, picking up the new physical space. So, you know, some of the students might not know, but you've just it's absolutely state of the art, fabulous new building now um, in Merchant Square. Um, and I know you're, you're hopefully going to get some groups of interested students out, you know, with COVID okay. rules in place, you know, before the end of this academic year. But for now, I believe you can go onto the virtual park site and you can actually sort of have digital views around it. So that's it's well worth doing and sort of prime um, prime real estate, I suppose, in, in Belfast. Um, the other thing is, and you know, we're doing a lot of, having a lot of discussions with students at the moment around, you know, a wide range of organizations are interested in a wide range of students. Um, and, you know, some of the big sort of traditional consultancy houses, the big four, you know, are viewed as accountancy or consultancy, but actually, you know, you've huge different areas um, that the students can work in. So um, can I just get you to maybe explain briefly around, you know, the, the the types of rules that are available? So they, you know, without going into too much detail, but they really do cross into lots of different areas, don't they? Um, Louise? Yeah, um, look, they do, Claudine, and um, it's that piece around actually once even you're in role, there's, you know, it's different opportunities depending on the different clients that you work for, the different projects that you get engaged in. So it might be something that, that actually you might be really interested in technology and going down the route of actually, I want um, to be able to configure an application and help build an application and implement that within a client. Or it might be actually that you're more interested in data and analytics something obviously me and Michael both said, nope, we're not really interested in that. <laughs> but, um, you know, so there is such a variety that actually um, have a look on the website to see the different opportunities, the different roles, but it's not just a, you know, yes, we only do technology and that's it. It's whether or not it's digital, whether or not, you know, you do want to go down the route of coding and things like we do within operate, et cetera. So there's plenty of different opportunities to get involved in. Yeah, it's not just STEM. Yeah. Technology enabled transformation just creates so much disruption in a positive yeah. way because it's changing things to make things better and more agile, faster scale, blah, blah, blah. And it needs a full range of people's skill sets and, and the impact of change through the what actually creates that change. So as I said, as a firm, we have that's where the opportunity lies. And as I said, you know, we can literally take in any person um and shape them into something that, you know, that plays to their strengths. And I will always go, we will quickly understand where you're strong. Uh, and we play things towards that because we want to make sure, 
you remember our job is to create fantastic outcomes for our clients and that requires fantastic people um and a lot of what i've learned is how you how you to bring the best out of people and to help them find themselves to add that contribution and then that end contribution is a, a great outcome right Guys, I'm, I'm conscious of, of time rolling on here, so I just kind of wanted to say thank you for opening this discussion. Um, it's a huge, huge topic, but I think what we've got this afternoon is a few golden nuggets of interesting points. And, you know, I think for our students, it's, it's really, you know, at this point or after this session to take five or ten minutes and think, well, what's an aha moment of something that I heard today? And, you know, let's even just give myself one action as a result of what I heard that I can take away and start to kind of tangibly make some steps to, to think about the passion topic, um, but also to think about your own career um, and, you know, um, some of the applications and some of the process you're now going to start to kickstart. So um, on behalf of myself and the careers team at Queen's and our student audience, I'd just like to extend my thanks to you, Louise and Michael, for time out of your very busy diaries this afternoon. Um, as I said, some great and unique insights. And, you know, for me, I think, you know, many or most of us want to pursue a passion and organisations such as PwC obviously encourage this, as we've discussed. Um, and what I took out of this is that actually, that, you know, viewing passion is something that's able to be developed as an ongoing process um, and as something that then can lead to you know, students to, to vary in their thinking of where they work and what they want to do. And it's a very changeable piece. Um, and it's important just to, to have that key open mind. Um, and I think, as you said, Michael, in terms of, you know, advice to your, your student self, you know, you'd like to be back there. So, you know, there's a real positivity in terms of, you know, where they're at now. So um, and how they can achieve their goals. So thank you for that. Um, just a reminder to the guys as well about tomorrow. So tomorrow is our spring recruitment fair. If you haven't already registered, we'd encourage you to do so ASAP. The platform is now live. You can go in and view all the employers and all the vast range of opportunities up there, including all of PwC's roles, um, graduate roles, um, internships and placements. Um, the Student Guide Centre will be open tomorrow on the day of the fair. So again, call in, log on if you want a bit of space. There's people there to help. Um, we really look forward to seeing you there. And I'll also just send through um, a reminder link for the virtual park in, in the chat. So um, thank you both very much for your time. Um, oh, and we'll have you. the opportunity to reposition this, put it up on their, our website as a bit of a podcast so the guys can go in and, and, and re-listen as well. So all the best. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you.